Farmers are rushing to harvest their rice in Chaesong Sao, east of Bangkok. The golden grains will be worth almost double the price next month. That's because the Thai government has made a pledge to buy rice at higher than market rates to boost the income of four million families. The extra cash is needed more than ever in areas of Thailand inundated by floodwaters for the past month. This is good thinking on the part of the government. It will help many farmers and we can increase our income. Thailand's rice accounts for 30% of international trade, but it's heavily infused with homegrown politics. The government of Yingluck Shinawat is trying to appeal to its rural supporters, but its policy threatens to drive up the cost of rice around the world. Exporters say other countries will use the opportunity to increase their rice prices and consumers will have to pay more for the staple that feeds half the world's population. Thailand will also likely lose its status as the number one rice exporter. Definitely we will lose our competitiveness uh, for export next year and probably uh, you know our competitors like Vietnam or even the uh, newcomers like uh, Cambodia, Myanmar will benefit from that. But the Thai government makes no apologies for its new plan. It's swept to an election victory on the back of the rice pledge policy and says it's a crucial opportunity to redistribute wealth in Thailand where the income gap is widening and causing social unrest. Why are all the rich get richer? and why at all the poorer get poorer. Um, I think it's a responsibility of government to step in uh, from time to time and realign uh, the system a little bit, uh, steer the economy towards uh, the right direction. Thailand's first rice subsidy scheme under former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat in 2004 was plagued with corruption. This government promises to do better while raising rice prices to a more realistic level for farmers. For Thailand's rural masses, it's a popular policy, but the ripple effects will be felt further afield. Ella Callan, Al Jazeera, Bangkok. Dr. Amorn is an economist and political lecturer at Chulalongkorn uh, University and joins us now from Bangkok. Uh, what do you make of uh, this government policy, doctor? Because uh, it does seem that it will result in Thailand becoming less competitive on its rice exports. Uh, yes, indeed. I, I think that the, the way that the government implement this kind of policy will take a lot of effect on the global, uh, uh, global rice price. For example, uh, as Thailand is a big exporter, I think uh, after a while, I mean after the, the policy is fully implemented, I think that uh, other people will eyes on Thailand as the high, really high price country. So they might look into another country to buy rice for their supplies. For example, Vietnam could be the case to take an, uh, another step to be the great or the biggest exporter among our region. So, I mean, in the short term, presumably, millions of people will be helped. What about the long term? Yes, in the long term, uh, I would say this is a kind of another kind of populist policy. The government have to fulfill the, its promises because you, you possibly realize that on the 3rd of July this year, the government has landslide, uh, won landslide the election, the general election, and it promises a lot of things to the public particularly the farmer, they just wait and see what the government would do for them. And, and this is the, the thing that they cannot uh, or inevitably to do. So it might take effect and it will cause a lot of something. Uh, of course, the, the farmer or Thai farmer will get a lot of benefit for this, but for the short term. But in the long term, we are aware that the government might run out of money because we don't know where the money can get from from the from the budget to supply for this scheme or this policy. Yeah, interesting question. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Dr. Amorn, speaking to us in Bangkok. There. Thank you.